Okay, so yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, my story of addiction and also my spiritual experience and also my introduction to the Course in Miracles and spirituality. And um, so um, my story was that um, at the age of um, at the age of 30, I mean, my whole life I was in active food addiction. So, you know, food addiction is essentially not wanting, you know, having, really for me it was like a feeling of like self-loathing and self-hatred. And when I went to the food, I got that, that kind of comfort and relief that I was just like, I could like get that kind of um, escape from not feeling bad just by going into the food and comforting myself. And that, that addiction grew, you know, that, that grew over the years. And, and I found that it was almost like needing more and more anaesthetic. In my early childhood, I would take a certain amount of food, but then later on, that amount of food wasn't enough to like comfort me. So then it escalated to more food. And then later, that amount of food wasn't enough, so it became more food, and there was obesity. And then, you know, even the food was not enough to comfort this kind of spiritual dis-ease within myself, uh, this lack of feeling connected in the world. Then I went into the stock market, uh, which is a very um, ego-based uh, ego based culture, especially the company I was in, it was very ego-based. Ego money motivated, pride, greed, selfishness. So I went into the stock market and then that was my next addiction. There was work workalism. So there was like, you know, uh, extreme workalism and also a very, very, you know, uh, enlargement of the ego in that, in that environment. And then, you know, the, then came the opposite sex and love addiction and various things. So those three addictions, eventually it was like, by using on those things and never letting go of this spiritual malady within myself, this spiritual disconnection from who I was meant to be, I'm just going more and more into this external stuff just to try and get some kind of connection or relief or some kind of hit or reward from these external phenomena, then I, you know, one day uh, working in the stock market on a flight back from New York to London, my feet swelled up, uh, my mother was terrified, my shoes weren't fitting on, you know, on the feet. I had a blood test done, immediately rushed to the uh, Royal Free Hospital with kidney failure. And I was on a hospital bed and the doctors were saying, we don't know what to do to keep you alive. And then I was facing death. And in facing death, suddenly like, it was like, it was so sudden. And uh, I think it was a mystical thing because I surrendered. It's like, there's nowhere for me to go. And I surrendered and I had a spiritual experience, like a heavenly, timeless spiritual experience. And I heard a voice say, in that heavenly stillness, find a spiritual solution. And that led me to explore lots of different spiritual avenues until I was given a, given, a man gave me a DVD. His name was Dr. David R. Hawkins. And I had a, what I now realize was a kundalini experience where a tingling up the spine and a bliss came over me as he started to speak. And then he talked about, uh, he said, if you've, got, if you've got addiction issues, you should go to the 12 steps, whatever addiction you've got, you know, if it's food, go to a 12-step program for food, or if it's alcohol, go to a 12-step program for alcohol. If it's drugs, you know, go to one for that. If it's love addiction, go to something that can sort out love addiction. Then, um, anyway, I did go to one for, uh, primarily for food because that was my main addiction. And then, and then he talked about the Course in Miracles. Now, the thing was like, you know, eventually because my health was so bad, I was on a dialysis machine uh, eight hours a day to keep me alive. Uh, I had gout. Gout is one of those things where you know, you're walking about and then suddenly your feet inflame so rapidly and the, the, the skin starts to swell two to three times up in size. So your skin is stretching extremely fast and you have this most horrific pain in your feet and in your joints as so it just swell up and obviously the inflammation, you know, the immune system goes into a huge massive inflammatory response. So I'd have these horrific gout attacks, you know, I'd have to 
use a walking stick uh, and uh, had asthma as well. So these things, and, and what Hawkins said was that he'd also had a spiritual experience. And by going to 12 steps, the addiction stopped and his um, 23 physical illnesses all healed by doing A Course in Miracles. And he also went to various spiritual teachers, teachers of enlightenment um, uh, that he sought, and he, 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 he attained this um, level of spiritual enlightenment. So that became my path, doing the 12 steps, doing A Course in Miracles. Also, Hawkins said that um, he encouraged, anyway, that's his view, and lots of Course in Miracles students and teachers have different views on it, but he said doing the lessons from A Course in Miracles every day is, uh, you know, it, it, that's the thing he, he strongly encouraged you to do. Pick up lesson one on day one and do lesson one and then on day two do lesson two. And I have been doing that now, I don't know, for, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years. Every day I've been doing A Course in Miracles lesson. I also do the 12 steps. I go to those, I do a program with that. And, um, and all my illnesses have gone through miracles. They've all vanished, all of those things. Um, I also met a teacher of enlightenment, Muji, who I, I kind of like, if you don't know who Muji is, I kind of say he's a bit like Eckhart Tolle, a little bit like him. And, uh, and I went to visit him and he asked me, what I'm, you know, and I was, I was, I was going to his groups and he asked me, um, and I was doing his practice, self-inquiry, it's like, what is observing what I am? You know, what's observing my thoughts? Can I be in the position of the observer of my thoughts? Can I be in the position of the observer of the location of my body? Can I observe what is being experienced, or what is being felt in this moment? Can I be the observer of that? So who's doing this practice with me in a, in a one-to-one? And he asked, and I said, he said to me, what, you know, what are you? And I said, well, <coughs> I'm aware that there's something observing my sense of self behind me that's observing me. And he said, well, what's behind that? What's observing that? And then I had, an, or I, could, I had a white light spiritual experience. It was like the world disappeared. And it was like being in the presence of infinite light, power and light beyond description. And uh, nothing existed. There was no thought. There was no this or that what we term duality. Duality didn't exist. It was just infinite light and power and love beyond description. And that's all. There was no time. There was nothing. And then suddenly it seemed like something like a thought tried to emerge in that light. And something identified with that thought. And it, suddenly the world appeared. And the spiritual teacher was in front of me. And there was tears running down. I was in absolute bliss and ecstasy. And then he said, you can leave now. And I was going down and it was like, it was like, it, the world was like an exquisite, it was like exquisite beauty was revealed in every moment. Everything was stunningly beautiful. And there was tears running down my eyes because everything was just so alive and so beautiful. So that was, um, that was the mystical experience of what it would be like if I let go of this ego identity that I was hooking into for my whole life. So through doing the work, of Course in Miracles, and doing this technique, which is called self-inquiry, going to the observer, you know, it's like the ego starts to get dissolved. Now the languaging in A Course in Miracles, um, some people find the languaging quite heavy, some people uh, don't like the word God, or don't like the word Holy Spirit, or, or Christ, or whatever. But if you can get beyond those words, it's a mystical teaching to dis let go of the ego, to let go of... You know, with the Course in Miracles, some of my favorite lessons, and, um, and this can be applied to everything. If you're in food addiction, or alcohol addiction, or if you're angry with your boss, or angry with a colleague, um, you know, the, the le all the lessons in A Course in Miracles can be applied to those situations, to release those situations. Some of my favorite lessons from A Course in Miracles, let's say, um, I'll give some examples um, with, 
with, uh, with food addiction and also with having resentments at people and, um, and also um, so with food addiction like one of the first one of the first few lessons in the Course of Miracles is like uh, my thought all my thoughts are meaningless and also that all the objects you see in the room are equally meaningless now what does this mean it means that um, how do you apply this lesson well how you apply this lesson let's say like I used to be um, I used to love donuts you know, like donuts was one of the um, one of the foods that I would fantasize about, I'd obsess about, and then I'd really get a, a huge comfort hit if I'd have a bag of donuts. You know, be it would, the donuts would be something I'd look forward to to binge out. So I, you know, with the Course in Miracles, I'd I'd have I'd I'd like I'd say like I'd look at the I'd look at, I'd have my room and the, let's pretend there was one donut on the table. I'd look at the cup. For, for one second and say, this cup is meaningless. Then I'd look at the donut for a second and say, that donut is meaningless. Then I'd look at the light bulb for a second and say, the light bulb is meaningless. And at each thing I'd look at for one second and say, it's meaningless. So eventually it's like the donut, the picture of a donut is just as meaningless as a cup or a table or a plant or a pillow or a chair. So as you're doing that, it's like it's stripping away, um, the Course would call it, a, it the special meaning that the ego has projected. And like a donut is no more interesting, uh, or has no more value or importance as, as a light bulb or as a cushion. Also the same thing, you know, like I used to have, uh, I used to sometimes get reactive to some of the words my mother used to use. So I used to use... The Course in Miracles of my mother, like my mother is just as meaningless as the table, and is just as meaningless as the chair, you know. Also my mother's vocal, her vocal tone is just as meaningless as, um, as traffic noise, which is just as meaningless as the noise of the tube, you see. So you're taking out any special projection that the ego accords to something being special, you see. So it's taking away all the projections the ego has that some things are more important than others. And from my spiritual experiences, it was kind of obvious. There's a world of absolute beauty and timelessness and presence and love and joy when the ego, to the extent that the ego is not in the, is like a dark filter which is blocking that God consciousness or that beauty that resides in every moment to the extent, you know, there's the gross, there's the gross levels of ego. Gross levels of ego are like you're acting out in heavy addictions. You know, it could be food, it could be alcohol, it could be love addiction, you know, where you're just obsessed with something. Like in, in um, food addiction, just obsessed with food and eating food. In um, workalism, you're just consumed with just endlessly working and, and, and getting to the next goal. In alcohol addiction, that's an obvious one. In love addiction, you're obsessed with the person or you're texting a person endlessly or wanting to the attention from that person endlessly. And um, so there's the various things. So if you're acting out, then your ego is very inflated and you're not going to have those mystical those mystical experiences of being connected and alive and seeing the beauty of life and, and coming from your divine potential. But then there's also, even if you're not acting out grossly in behaviours, then there's also uh, what I call the more, just the, the thinking is always going off into the past or the future or is in fantasy or obsession or, or something. So there can't be any, any presence there. So that also cuts you off from the light and the potential. Also, as you do this work, you know, when you're in these lower vibrations, it's like you just, you see a world of darkness and, and, and entrapment and bondage. So that's when you're in the thing. As you let go more and more of this thing by applying the Course in Miracles or any spiritual work, 
uh, then you start to see a more lighter world with more potential. You start to see things as being more beautiful. But when you see things as being more beautiful, because I come from an addictions background, it's everything becomes equally beautiful. Every moment, there is no person or food, or there is no there is no such thing as specialness, or making something. Uh, you know, there's other words of using specialness or making something has a higher power status or something, everything is equally beautiful. And this is one of the keys, I think. And I think The Course in Miracles talks about, you know, nothing is special. The closer you get to your God consciousness or the eternal now, there is nothing your ego sees externally that has more importance than anything else, you see. And this is one of the keys. Like, I go to 12-step groups, and that's very nice. But with The Course in Miracles, it's like there is no thought that you have that is more special than any other thought. And there is no object or person that's any more special than any other person. And in fact, a person is not any more special than a table. So I think that takes it to a radical point of view. Because, you know, as the Course in Miracles say, God is in this table as equally as God is as in you as a person. You see? So like the ego then you start to see how the ego operates. It's like it says, well, a person has more worth than a table, and that person has even more worth than every other person. So you see, that creates a filter to experiencing the light and the presence and that divine life that one could be living. So as you start to do the Course in Miracles or other spiritual tools, you realize that nothing can be more important than anything else if you want to awaken more and more into that spiritual potential. If you go on into deeper works, um, just to go on a side note, often uh, spiritual awakenings start to occur. Um, you know, things like, um, in Indian culture, um, uh, they've known for many thousands of years, when you get to these advanced spiritual states, they call them the cities. I don't know if anyone's heard of the cities, but the cities are when you start to get um, spiritual gifts, which ordinary people don't usually have access to, like uh, being able to um, know the thoughts of another person. You just pick up what the thoughts are, what's going to happen. Various other, th other gifts, um, yeah, you may open up into things like being able to read auras. Um, also, there's more extraordinary gifts, like being in two, like, two places, being able to be in two different locations at the same time. Very, very extraordinary, extraordinary gifts. Also, like um, people, when you get to certain vibrations, other people start to experience miraculous healings around these teachers. I mean, a, a good example of that was like Mother Teresa. So it'd be like, like someone would go to Mother Teresa with cancer in their lungs, and then they'd go for an x-ray sometime later and it, the cancer had just disappeared. So those kind of mystical things start happening as you access these higher vibrations. Also, you start to not be in bondage. You start to live a life from not being wanting all the time, that neediness that, that drives things. On, a, on another note, I was quite driven because just from a, a place of like wanting physical healing from my illnesses and my diseases. It's like, and we'll be going on to this, um, like uh, I suffered from kidney failure, um, gout, asthma. But, I, you know, like Hawkins had 23 illnesses that disappeared. I had three illnesses that disappeared. I mean, it works universally. It doesn't matter whether it would be diabetes or blood sugar levels or whether it would be like damage to the, to the uh, skeletal, skeletal structure. All of these things can be, um, in my experience, miracles can happen and these things can, can leave. And, and um, lesson, um, which we'll be doing a little bit later on, is uh, talking a little bit about lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles, which is very, very profound if you're suffering with either addiction or like an illness, it could be diabetes. 